in simple terms, revenue recognition rules are made to stop companies from recording revenue that they're not entitled to. It's that simple. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video is meant to be your basic guide to revenue recognition, where we break things down and make it understandable, even if you're not in accounting. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. My name is Bill Hanna, I'm the financial controller. I'm a licensed CPA in the great state of New York, and I have over 15 years of experience in the field of finance, where I started out at PricewaterhouseCoopers as an auditor, and then I transitioned out to private industry, and then I worked my way up from a financial analyst position all the way up to a corporate controller position, which is what I do today. And this channel is all about giving you the summary or the juice of my experience over the last decade and a half. And I do this here in the YouTube channel, as well as on my website through blog posts, an online course and templates. So go ahead and check that out as well. I'll start you off with a quick example. If a company sells a couch and issues an invoice for $1,000, let's assume the terms are net 30 and it's FOB shipping point. The net 30 refers to how long the customer has before they pay, and FOB shipping point refers to when the ownership is transferred. In this case, the point of shipping. This information will be key when deciding on revenue recognition. In this case, ownership transfers to the customer at the point of shipping, and that's when the seller can recognize the revenue. To contrast this, let's assume that the terms are net 30 and FOB destination. This means that ownership transfers to the customer at the point of delivery, and that's when the revenue recognition can occur. This matters a lot to sellers because if shipping happens on December 28th of year one, for example, while delivery happens on January 1st of year two, this can make all the difference in whether the seller can recognize the revenue in year one or in year two. So in simple terms, revenue recognition rules are made to stop companies from recording revenue that they're not entitled to. It's that simple. Revenue recognition is figuring out when a business has actually earned its revenue with the keyword being earned, because it's all about earning the revenue you book when it comes to revenue recognition rules. And by the way, many finance professionals refer to revenue recognition as RevRec. So if you hear that expression, you know what it's about. To better understand revenue recognition rules, let's begin by looking at small businesses. If you're running a small business, chances are you are recognizing revenue using the cash accounting method. If your business is using the cash basis of accounting, then it's real easy. You earn the revenue when the cash hits the cash register or the bank account. This is because cash accounting is very, very basic. And it means you book revenue and expenses when the cash is either deposited or withdrawn from the bank or the credit card. And let me be very clear about cash accounting. Cash accounting is not compliant with US GAAP or generally accepted accounting principles. And that's why cash pays accounting is only used by small businesses. And because cash accounting is not GAAP compliant, businesses typically cannot run on cash accounting forever. There is usually a point in time where a business will have to migrate its books and records to accrual accounting. This is usually happening when a business begins to take on outside investors or when its revenue surpasses $5 million a year, whichever comes sooner. Once a business is large enough to migrate off of cash accounting, they use something called accrual accounting. So under accrual accounting, you book the revenue when you earn it, not when you receive the cash. It doesn't matter when you receive the cash. It matters only when you earn the revenue based on a contract or the invoice that you got with the customer. So it doesn't matter when the cash is received, it matters when the revenue is earned. You earn it, then you book it, otherwise you cannot book the revenue. Knowing when to recognize revenue is one of the reasons why we have generally accepted accounting principles. GAAP has detailed rules for when and how to recognize revenue and how to report it on the income statement. The most recent of these rules is ASC 606 or Accounting Standard Codification 606. Let's look at a couple of more examples of the correct GAAP compliant revenue recognition and let's look at the subscription business model. Imagine that you own a wine store that runs a monthly wine club. This is a subscription based business. Your customers pay you $600 upfront for an annual subscription and every month you send them three bottles of your groundbreaking organic wine to their doorstep. You would then likely only recognize $50 of revenue each month. Just because one of your customers paid you $600 doesn't mean you earned the whole $600. If for some reason you had to cancel someone's subscription before the end of their contract, for example, you would have to pay them back their money. 
This is the whole concept of deferred revenue, also known as unearned revenue. Deferred revenue, as the name implies, is revenue that the company defers its recognition to the future, meaning deferred revenue will become revenue at some point in the future. So this means that when your wine company receives $600 upfront from a customer, it is recorded as deferred revenue, which is a liability for the business against the cash that we received in the bank. Why is this recorded as a liability and not revenue? Well, if the customer cancels mid-year, for example, the company would owe him back $300, depending on how the agreement is structured, which is the whole reason for recording deferred revenue as a liability. As the company delivers on a monthly basis the wine that is promised to the customer, it should reduce that liability in $50 increments. In future videos, we'll dive deeper into ASC 606 for revenue recognition, and I'm gonna discuss some of the changes that I'm seeing that are impacting the accounting profession. I also wanted to update you guys on a personal project of mine. Today, a team from Tesla Energy will be at my house installing solar panels and two power walls. I am ecstatic and have been waiting for this day for the last six months. I ordered solar panels through Tesla six months ago and the process involves getting permits from my town and from the utility company. All right, so Tesla is here today to install the power walls um, and we've been waiting on this for about six months. So it looks like it's a little bit difficult to, to buy those and get them installed. We ordered them in uh, August of 2020, and now we are in March of 2021, and we're just getting them today. So um, let me just show you around. The bad boys. I'm going to post another video on this once the system is up and running, but here's a quick rundown of the project and the cost involved. My solar panel project will include a 16.3 kilowatt solar system on the roof of the house plus two power walls. This size system is on the larger side and is supposed to provide about 90% of my electric needs for my home, which is a four bedroom house. The two power walls can support the home in a power outage for one day, which may seem like a short duration, but if a power outage lasts longer, the system will recharge each day from the sun, so we'll be able to use the power at night. The purchase price for the panels and the power walls combined is $34,000, but we will get about $9,000 back as a federal tax credit when we file our 2021 taxes next year. So the net price is about $25,000. I went with a 10-year loan with no money down at 3.99% APR and the payment is around $300 a month, which is lower than my current electric bill, which averages about $400 per month. I'll make sure to post a video in the future on the economics of having Tesla solar panels and power walls, but until then, I hope everyone stays healthy and happy, and see you in the next video.